Thank you, Manu Chris. Good morning. Please tell the person beside you first, look at that person, okay? And say, you look good today. <laughs> oh, happy Valentine's lang kasi, belated, no? The traffic was unvalentinic last Friday, no? One hour around the circle. Who, who would love to spend uh, your Valentine's in traffic? You should have planned to just spend it in the car, right? I'm wearing red. Some of you are still wearing red. You know? Praise the Lord for the series that we have in the book of Acts. Uh, change topic, change gear. I love this because it is the, the church at work. It does not teach us a lot about teaching and doctrine, although it is uh, replete with a lot of teachings about uh, doctrine and truth. It teaches a lot about how to be church. And though we have picked up a lot, I picked up a lot from my study in the book of Acts and reading a lot of, about the book of Acts, I have come to the conclusion that many who are in church ministry and church leadership have, have picked up the processes of what's happened in this book but had missed significantly on why the book was written and uh, how the process, the principles of doing church is to actually be applied in church. We're going to learn more of that today. We have been learning the book of Acts from chapter 1 to chapter 5. We've seen uh, this is the B series, be bold, be real. Last week was Be Real. And we're going to talk about today in 6 and 7, Be Ready. Be Ready. Are you ready? Okay. Well, not yet. Okay? We're going to talk about being ready from the book of Acts. But first, just the big picture of the book of Acts. I love it when I preach, I put the big picture. So we see the context of what we're studying. Simple. Book of Acts is uh, Acts 1.8. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Don't miss that. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you shall receive power. And the manifestation of that is this. You shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem. That's chapters 1 to 7. What happened there? In Judea and Samaria, that's chapter 8. And to the rest of the world, the ends of the earth. the chapter 9 up to the rest. That's simply the outline of the book of Acts. What happened when the Holy Spirit empowered the disciples and through them the church began an enterprise of disciple making of all the nations then that continues up to now, an enterprise that's never stopped. And the reason is because it's not man-made, but spirit-empowered. And that's the missing part. We've learned so much of the methodology of doing church in this book, but we have learned, but we've also missed the source of its success and power. It's the Holy Spirit. That's why I will call it the Acts, not of the apostles, but of the Holy Spirit. The Acts of the apostles through the, the Acts of the Holy Spirit through the apostles and even to the non-apostles. And when the Holy Spirit moves, it's the book of Acts. And so we pick it up from there, the principles on how we ought to partner with the Spirit, how we ought to be church so that the Spirit can be free to fulfill the divine agenda that is to be completed until the day of Jesus Christ. Peter is the... <clears throat> main personality in the first section. Philip, is the main personality of the middle section. Very short, but very significant. And Paul, most of the book of Acts. It's focused on the establishment and growth of the one church in Jerusalem, which, because of the persecution in chapter 8, will spread. And it will go to all the rest of the earth, even to the Gentiles, through Paul, the multiplication of disciples, 
and churches. And I like the term now being used instead of church, communities of Christ believers. I'm beginning to use that even in the new school I'm heading up, the Conservative Baptist Seminary. We, we try to shy away from the conventional terms, church planting, soteriology, pneumatology, theology, lahat mga GG na yan, no? We're just using the common term. The church is really the community of Christ believers gathered regularly every week and scattered, hindi nagkakalat, hindi, nagkakalat the rest of the week to be salt and light for the rest of the world. This is the acts of the Holy Spirit in that book. And where are we? We are right there. We're going to finish chapter 6 and 7. So it's a pretty long and challenging uh, chapter they gave me, but uh, actually it is the story of how the church growing and the numbers have become difficult to manage. What happened because of that? What did the Lord do? And how from that event, this one single person that is featured that will be the key to step into the next phase in Judea, Samaria. So that, 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 that will be chapter 7, somewhere there, okay? So be ready. And we're going to be tasked to actually call, uh, called actually every believer to be ready for three actions in kingdom participation. This is, these are not passive things that you will do or think. Or consider these are actions. Every child of God engaged in the body, the church life, are to be ready to tatlo po yan. Ano po yung tatlong yon? Let's pray. Father, we ask you to teach us now in the Word, and the Word will open our eyes, illumine our minds and hearts to the way you work in the church and how you will work in me, through me, in my family. And in the place, neighborhood, office, work, school, wherever you have placed me. For Lord, I don't define my life. You have defined my life. And I want to live it the way you have purposed it. For that, I will find my total and utmost fulfillment. In Jesus' name, amen. Be ready. So that tatlo po yan. Let's start with reading of chapter 6. I'm going to read through the entire chapter 6. It's not so long, but I'm not going to read chapter 7, which is very long. But I will summarize that for you. Chapter 6 starts now with the continuing from Be Real, the community, the challenges of the church in its early stage. Many have been baptized, 3,000 on the first day. Thousands more were coming in. I could just imagine they did not have, have a big Araneta Coliseum dome during that time. They didn't have the 50,000 sitting capacity dome of uh, Bulacan, somewhere there. It's about to finish. You know what I'm talking about. You don't know? You, they just had the temple. They were still Jewish, but Christians. And they had the apostles spread throughout the city teaching the word. But they're regular meeting were in the oikoses, the homes. And in these small groups, the church took its roots and strong as it was then, it kept strong up to now. Now in those days when the number of disciples were, was multiplying, not adding, but multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Now, here's the situation. Last week, we learned of a problem, internal problem, that the external problem. You know, Peter was in prison. There was all these kinds of external problems. We're going to have some external problems later on today. But the, the internal problem was about a couple whose names were according to their passions, you know, Ananias. May pera ka ba, Ana? No? Ananias, no? Ang, ang, kaya pangasawa ko si Sapira. Kaya Sapira lang ang kanyang ano, no? Alala nyo yung story ni Ananias and Sapira, di ba? And you know what happened to them. Because of their uh, dark intent, the church was pure and darkness came into the church because of that God had to deal with this couple and how did God deal with this couple? No? 
God took them, their life. And there was fear in the entire community. Holiness is a must and non-negotiable for the church. And so must, is, must it be still today. Now there's another problem that come in. It's not a problem, an issue of moral, financial. It is an issue dealing with growth. They were growing. There were so many of them. And yet there were only 12 apostles and they could not become 144 apostles or 500, no? There were only 12 of them and there was now areas in the community that was experiencing neglect. And here was a situation where the Hebraic widows were being fed, but the Hellenistic widows were not. Now, that's a problem. That was a problem then. Mga widows pa naman yan. No? You see, the Hebraic widows were those who grew up in Palestine. They, were, they grew up in the ways of the Jewish communities in the Jerusalem Palestinian area, which is about which are a bit quite different from the ways and culture of the Hellenistic Greek Jews who grew up probably in Antioch, in Greece, in other places. And Hellenistic Christians who have migrated to Jerusalem because of the church, they were beginning to feel the hmm. Parang ibayata tayo dito. You know? Can you imagine, you know, an Ilocano right in the middle of Kapampangans? Or baliktad, isang Kapampangan right in the middle of Ilocanos. No? And, you know, uh, last few weeks, I even realized that uh, Bulacan Tagalog have a spite against Laguna Tagalog. You know? And they would say, Laguna Tagalog, ay, nako, walang sinabi ang mga yaan. No? At sabi naman ng mga Laguna, ay, nako, sino ba ang talagang tunay na Tagalog? Di ba? Can you imagine, no? This was happening in the church. Hellenistic versus the Hebraic. And this was noticed immediately by the top leadership. Tignan nyo, verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, It is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. So here's the point. Oh, we're going to have more points here. But the, disi the disciples were saying, We cannot do everything. This was an issue of organization. This was an issue of task distribution. This was an issue not of mas importante ito, ito hindi. Hindi po yun ang pinag-uusapan dito. If you, like us to, if you would like to do the preaching and teaching of the word, you do it, we will serve tables. But that's, toka po namin yun. That's where God has placed us. Now, the serving of the tables for the Hellenistic widows, that's, that's a challenge. So, what did they say? Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good repute, reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. Now, it's interesting that the apostles didn't say, seek out from among you seven men who've been trained in Hyatt Hotel or in, uh, you know, the top uh, HDR and hotel and management who knows how to wait on tables. Those who've been trained, no, hindi po yun. Anong hinanap nila? Character. Spiritual. Moral. Competence. Good reputation. Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. With whom we may appoint over this business. This is not a small thing. This is a business. The Greek word is a major task. Over this major task. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. So, it's like saying this. We cannot neglect this, neither can we neglect this, but we are already here. Therefore, let us find the right people for this one. You got it? So some commentaries had belittled waiting table over the Word of God and the preaching of the Word. No. In the church, every part is important as, for every part is as important as every part. And the saying, please the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, the Holy Spirit, uh, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, oh, not so mga may babies dyan, mamili na kayo, okay? Parmenas, hoy, Parmenas, halika dito, parang ayaw ko yata tawagin siya ng gano'n, no? And Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, 
they lay their hands on them. Mantakin nyo? Asan yung pitong waiters? Patayo hindi to lahat yung mga waiters. Let's put our hands upon them. Woo! The way of the church. In the early church, can you imagine how important it was that even waiting tables needed the anointing of the leadership? Ngayon eh, gusto ko po maglingkod sa pangalan. Anong, anong kaya mong gawin? Wala akong alam. O sige, hugasan mo yung mga, mga ano, yung mga silya. Dali mo ha. Oh, ganun. Walang anointing yun. Not then. Every part, even waiting table. And if the standard of the Bible was this high, even down to the, what we will call the mean, the mean, the menial, how much more ought we to keep that standard nowadays? And how we belittle the work of the Holy Spirit when we don't do so nowadays. So then, what do I find here? That the first thing in the church that we ought to be ready to do for every believer so that the word of God can spread and the disciples can continue to multiply, there is this. Be ready to what? Serve. Now, this is simple but very difficult to do. Jesus modeled this servant leadership. See, the dis apostles were not saying, these are servants, we are not. No. We are serving where God wants us to be, the word and prayer. We need to find the right people to do the ministry to the widows. And we learned a few lessons here. The word serve, used here in verse uh, 2, is diakoneo. Where we get the word, what? Deacon. And if you could read First Timothy 3, they are further described there, the work of the deacon. The, deacon. the deacons were called in Acts 6 in order that every part of the ministry have servants. And not part will be neglect, not one part will be neglected. And so, it's so important that we learn the lessons. When the church is moving forward, it's multiplying, it's going everywhere, it is enlarging. Na, hindi na, nakakundong kumahog na yung membership committee kasi hindi nila maayos yung database sa dami ng pangalan. No? O oh, ito pa, tatlong libo, nababtais. Taku! Eh, no, wala pa namang computer, no? kakamayin lahat yun sa kanilang database. No? And dami dami nila. When the church is moving forward, it needs to be what? Organized. It needs, the Holy Spirit will not organize. It is us. It is a human endeavor to organize. And God will use the, our method of organization. But the empowerment of it all, the unction, and the anointing of it all will come from God. But we must act. We must organize. The church is not described as disorderly. God is a God of order. And so they put that in practice then. And in its organization, so that every ministry is covered and sustained, it is sustained according to task giftedness and ministry fit. I'm going to explain these two uh, terms. Task, task giftedness is who you are in three uh, fashions. One, what are your natural gifts? Okay? So, Kung ano yung natural na gift mo, tung ka. Diba, Ate Belen? Yan ang yan example ko. No? Tops pa rin talaga magluto sa buong mundo si Ate Belen ko. No? Kaya, kahit pag siya ang nagluto, ay, kahit may sakit, ako'y pupunta para makatikim ng oxtang. O, nagpatunog pa ako, no? no? <laughs> because na, dun, dun yung nakita yung ministry niya. Ngayon, kung nakita lang niya yung pagluluto niya bilang pagluluto, Wala. Ate Belen saw it as a ministry. At ang mga kapatid na mga briones, grabe magluto yung mga yan. No? Yung ilang po sa inyo, ang gagaling kumanta. Yung ilan sa inyo, tumutugtog. Yung ilan sa inyo, magaling sa math, magaling sa... Whatever is your giftedness, that's in three ways. What is your natural gifting? What is your spiritual gifting? Meron po tayong... Uh, anong class yun? 301. 
Every member should go through 301 where you will de de determine kung ano spiritual giftedness mo. If you are gifted in evangelism, then you ought to be at the EV2. Kailan mag-start yung EV2? Mamaya, no? If, next week? Pag ikaw naman eh, ano, gifted sa speaking, eh huwag ka manahimik. If your gift is mercy, we have so many members needing dalaw. We have three members na namatayan this week. Hindi kami magka, Bo, saan ka? Saan ka? Saan ako? Para sa services. If your gift is giving, then give. If your gift is leadership, andun. 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, andun yung spiritual gift. The second gift, is spiritual gifting. And the third is acquired gift. What is acquired gift? Dati ako marunong mag-computer. Ngayon, hacker na ako. Di ba? <laughs> eh, kristyano na ako. Hacker for the Lord na ako. Di ba? Pwede ba yun? Di ba? So, gagamitin mo yun. Kung ikaw naman, eh, hindi mo gifting yun, tapos doon ka nilagay, what happens to the church? Di ba? Gusto mo mag-solo. Pero kailangan talaga pang-solo ka lang. Ikaw lang dapat makapakinig ng boses mo, no? Kasi dispalinghago ka, wala ka sa tono, di ba? Tapos ipipilit mo, gusto mo mag-solo. Hindi pwede, masisira yung church. Hindi mo pwede igid. And some of us are actually doing tasks in the church. It's not our gifting in any of the three. Natural, spiritual, or acquired. Meron isang gustong kumanta. Magsosolo daw siya. Pastor, kasi gusto ko mag-solo. Bakit? Eh, gusto ko talaga, eh, type ko talaga kumanta eh. eh. hindi ka talaga marunong kumanta, kapatid eh. Hindi, mag-aaral ako kay San Pedro. Patayin na si San Pedro, no? Mag-aaral ako sa UP para matuto ko ng kumanta. Kung hindi mo talent, hindi mo talent. Correct? So, kung hindi mo talent, huwag mong pilitin. Pag 4 feet 11 ka, huwag mong igiit ikaw ang center ng basketball team. Unless, basketball team ng mga bata, no? You understand? So, what is your gifting? This is, this is what we're talking about. Paul, you know, the apostles were saying, God has given us the gift and the capacity as apostles to teach the word, the doctrine, to pray. We need to focus on that because that is core and important, our, the connection of the church to our one God. But the care of the people, the care of the people, we can do that. But you know, our time is only limited. All of us have 24 hours each. I wish I had 48 hours. So we now need servants to fill in the places as we are growing. We need to organize according to our task giftedness. What is ministry fit? Ministry fit is this. It's not about your, your capacity. It's about you. Bagay ka ba dyan? Now listen. Listen to the word of God when it says, Choose from among you seven men who are ba 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 ba. The seven men were Hellenistic Jews. You got that? Yung, yung mga katama nyo, yung mga katulad ninyo. Yun ang ibig sabihin. So, if I'm Ilocano, where is the best church planting place I should join? Di ba? Yung Bisaya. Oh, tinuod git. Di ba? Kasi marunong din pala akong Bisaya. No? No? Kung Ilocano ako, magaling ako pag Ilocano, doon ako, that's where I fit. Correct? If I do not have, you know, may mga iba tayo, sa ati, yeah, assigned sa children, I hate kids. Pero nandun ka, hello, kanta tayo, gusto ko pagpapatayin kay lahat. Parang ganun, ano? You know, it doesn't, it doesn't fit you, right? So your fittedness is, is your, your culture, perhaps your skin color, your, your, kaya ang Pilipino po, multi tayo eh. Very wide ang ating ministry fittedness. We are known as the brown missionaries worldwide in global missions because we are the best missionaries kasi yung mga brown missionaries, sinasawag nila, they can fit anywhere. Totoo yun. When I go to Japan, over the counter, they speak to me in Japanese. Sasagot ako, Otosan, Otosan, no? Otosan. Otosan nyo ako, no? No? When I go to China, you know, they come to me, Oh, ha, kong hei, pachoy. Oh, fat daw ako, No? If I go to Malaysia, they speak to me in Malaysia. If I go to Singapore, they say, praise the Lord. You know, akala nila, Singaporean ako. Kasi, ganun ang mga Pinoy. 
Para tayong mga chameleons, no? Pag nasa Italy ka, ah, ganda, pizzeria, pizzeria, ganun, ganun na magsalita. Pag nasa London ka naman, hayaw, no? Kapag nasa, pag, ang galing-galing natin, pag kusan tayo pumasok, kasi ang Pilipino may gift na ganun. And we have recognized that in, in, the, in the phenomenon called the Filipino diaspora. And, and God is sending a lot of missionaries from here. That's why in this church, we believe that we want to leverage that as part of our ministry fittedness as a church. That's how the church grows. It must be organized. It must be sustained by the giftedness so that there will be no neglect of the prime as well as the menial. Prime and menial, menial doesn't mean prime is more important and menial is less important. No. Even 1 Corinthians 12, he says, uh, some members of the body seem glorious and some ignoble, but God has actually given greater care for those who are unseen and ignoble. Basahin niyo sa 1 Corinthians 12. Wala po ditong mas importansya sa church. Ang importante, no neglect. And if you see in this church, areas that are being neglected, we in the leadership would love to hear from you. And no, so that there will be no areas of neglect. Service is based on God's anointing before man's appointing. And this is where the church has failed a lot today. Ano yung sabihin nito? Yung pong i-appoint mo kasi doktor, PhD, reverend, attorney, ano pa? Engineer, architect. Ang mga pangalan niya, Philip Teroja, PhD, DDT, pang-ipis lang yun, DDT, no? <laughs> yung mga buhay pan panahon na yun, di ba? Yung tsh, tsh, DDT yun, eh, no? <laughs> Hindi, alam nyo, the church has fallen into what? Appointing without anointing. And that is very sad. Is it happening in the church? Oh, yes. I was counseling with the chairman of a church that split one-fourth Three-fourths. Yung three-fourths ang umalis. Yung one-fourth ang naiwan. Yung one-fourth ang aking kinakounselan. Kasi tama sila. Bakit umalis yung three-fourths? Kasi yung pastor, sama kayo sa akin, mag-start ako na bagong church. So tinanong ko, bakit sumama yung three-fourths sa kanila? Ano ba naging problema ni pastor na umalis? Eh, may kabit siya. Oh, sorry, we have non-Filipino audience here. Uh, meron siyang cubs. Uh, ano, meron siyang, uh, she, he has uh, what? Uh, the pastor has a mistress, right? The pastor has a mistress. What? The pastor has a mistress? And three-fourths, the church went with him? Did you ask why they went to be with that pastor uh, even though they knew? Yes. What did they say? They said, oh, he's so good in preaching. He's so good in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic and Ilocano and Visaya and Chinese and everything. What has the church become today? That we appoint without God's anointing. Another church in the province who's complaining to me that their worship minister has to be replaced. And they say, why? Why are you complaining? Because he's, he's the best worship minister we've ever had for many years of existence. Music major siya. Ang kaling niya. Yung sing namin gumanda, the band. Talaga napapa-worship kami pag siya nagli-lead at tinitrain niya kami. O, eh bakit kailangan siyang palitan? Eh kasi live-in siya eh. Anong live-in? Sa church? Hindi, may ka-live-in siya. Sino kalibin niya? Yung girlfriend niya. Oh, hindi nga naman pwede. Eh, pastor, ang galing, galing eh. You see what's happening? Now that the church is so de deluded and deceived that we have come to replace God's anointing with man's appointing? No way. Service is based on God's anointing before. So choose from among you men of good repute full of the Spirit. Ganun dapat. And so, this is so important. And when these factors are ensured, the church is edified. The church grows. The church remains pure. 
and the church continues in its mission. Serve. Be ready to serve. So if I want to put this into one statement, I will say it this way. To be ready to be a servant, I must be spiritually equipped and ready to be a vessel for Christ's edification. Basahin natin together, aloud, go! Spiritually equipped and ready to be a vessel for church edification. In other words, what? Serve. Got that? You need to pray this. Lord, I don't know if I'm this, but I need to be, I want to be a spiritually equipped and, and ready to be your vessel for the edification of CCBC. Place me, O oh God, where you want me. If you're, your place you think is only that chair, you're wrong. Okay, every Sunday, this is my place every Sunday. No, that's not the place of service. That's the place of seating and sleeping if the message is boring. No? Get up from the chair and serve. Begin to serve. Be ready. The second being ready is this. Stephen accused of blasphemy. Ooh, what happened? Now that the seven have been chosen and the church begins to grow, another problem comes in from the outside. Full of faith and power, he did great wonders and signs among the people. So si Stephen, hindi lang siya magaling na waiter. He was also uh, ministering with powerful manifestation from God. Then there arose from what is called the synagogue of freedmen. Cyrenians, Alexandrians, and those from Cilicia and Asia disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom of the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. Before I continue, I want to encircle this word freedman. What is freedman? Di ba dapat freedman? What is freed man? Past tense. It's a, it's a Greek, it's, 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 a, it's a Jewish term. You see, in the Jewish culture, when you buy a slave, may slavery pa eh, you buy the slave from non-Jews, and they become Jews. Okay? And when they become Jews, and they are slaves, they are allowed only to be slaves maximum seven years. After seven years, the master is supposed to hand out a certificate of freedom to the slave. And that slave now becomes a freed man. A freed man. And so, from then on, freed man and so on. There's this society, the synagogue of freed men. These were former slaves, former Gentiles who became Jews and were already finished with their life as slaves. And now they have become free. Had began to dispute against Stephen, which gives me some room in my mind to suspect that probably Stephen was a freed man. I don't know. Your imagination is, ma is as good as mine so long as it's biblical. Okay? But that's beside the point. Here's the point. S Stephen caught the ire of these people and they wanted him down. They wanted him down so much that in verse 12, they stirred up the people and elders and the scribes and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. This is not the church council. Not the church council. This is the political Jewish council. Equivalent today, the barangay or the city hall. No? And before the leadership, they also set up false witnesses and said, this man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. And all who sat in the council looked steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of an angel. Uy, 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 uy. Tignan mo nga uli yung katabi mo. Mukha bang angel yung katabi mo, no? Hindi ho, mukhang natutulog. Gisingin mo, okay, no? You know, the manifestation was in the ministry of Stephen, even in his face. He, the Holy Spirit was so real to him. Can you imagine anointing? Can people see Christ through you? That's so important. And, and here we, we see what happens. It, chapter 6 ends there and continues in chapter 1, verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 1, where it says, Then the high priest 
said, are these things so? So this opposition came from outside. When the church is growing, when your life is growing, when your ministry is growing, expect opposition. We're going to look at that in a while. And when you face opposition, there's one thing you need to be ready to do. In the church, you're ready to serve. Amidst opposition, in the midst of opportunity, he is standing before the leaders of the city. What did Stephen do? He said, Brethren and fathers, listen. Be ready to speak. There are times we need to be quiet in serving, but there's a time we need to speak. When was the last time you had to speak and stand up for the faith? In your classrooms, where your professors ridicule Christianity. In your offices, and your friends, when they ridicule you. In your being born against. Born against, no? <laughs> or you, whatever they call you. Are you ready to speak? Stephen was ready. Ready in many ways. First, we learned the lesson that when believers are on the move, the opposition happens. When there's no opposition, there's nothing to oppose. You got that? Perhaps there's no real evidence of Christ being in you. That's why. Like one disciple I have when I was already uh, finishing schooling, professor na kami, di ba, Kuya Phil, sabi mo, pag Kristiyano ako, I will experience opposition? Oo. Hindi. Bakit? Dito ako sa opisina ko, wala naman nag-oppose sa akin. Really? Oo. Eh, mga ano yung mga yun? Grabe. No, grabe sila sa kanilang buhay. Mga talagang makasalanan. Pero hindi kayo no-oppose. Hindi. Bakit kaya? Eh, hindi nila alam eh. Anong tawag mo doon? Sorry, I'm speaking in Tagalog for those who are not, uh, who do not know Tagalog. Hindi ko na, i- i- ano, biyam na. Opposition happens. Opposition will take place. And there are places in the world today that you will be able to say, I'm glad I'm in the Philippines instead of where? Huh? In the Middle East, in Syria, in Lebanon, in these places where Christians are being beheaded. In places like India and Pakistan, Afghanistan. In places like I wouldn't say anymore. Christianity is being tested to the ultimate in those areas. Opposition happens. The Bible did not leave us unwarned about this. Scriptures from beginning to end is replete with words of warning and encouragement that we are to be ready to suffer and to face opposition. The believer who is spirit-led turns opposition into what? Opportunity for a kingdom expansion. Here's Stephen. Suddenly he realized the mayor is here, the governor is here, da, 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 da. everybody is here. I'm going to speak up. There was one time, nagpapalabas kami ng Jesus film. Napunta kami sa isa sa mga bayan dyan sa Panay Island. Nakalimutan ko kung bayan yon. Pero we had to cross a river. At magbayad pa kami 10 piso dahil yung raft namin, eh, ano, yun lang ang way. We got to the other side of the river. May dala kaming Jesus film. We went to the mayor, showed him the letter, and then he asked for IDs. So, naglabas ako ng ID. Paglabas ko ng ID ko, hindi ko dala yung aking Campus Crusade ID. Yung dala ko UP ID. Nung nakita yung UP ID, medyo napas, napa, hmm, ganun. Hmm, pag ganun siya. Bakit kaya? Eh, si Mayor Bungal eh, walang ngipin sa harap, ano? Kaya, ngingiti-ngiti siya. Kitang-kita ko yung dila niya. Ngayon, <laughs> kayo naman, yung imagination nyo, masyado naman. <laughs> Tapos kinaganong-ganon niya. Dito lang muna kayo, walang aalis. Tapos, may dalawang pulis pinatawag niya. Dinig na dinig ko, walang pwedeng umalis sa mga ito. Ba't kaya? Tapos, Lumapit yung isang polis, detained ho kayo. Bakit? Anong ginawa namin? And you know, here I was, I was in a situation where I realized that, what? how did I put myself into this situation? I didn't, hindi ko pa na, nanonotice, it was my UP ID. Eh. 
na didit eh. Then, wala pang lunch, gutom na kami, pasokan yung mga tao. Mayroon dalawang priest ng Catholic, priest ng Aglipay, mayroong uh, ibang mga ano, leaders, then chief of police, military, vice mayor, counselor, city treasurer, lahat sila. Pinuno yung bahay ni mayor. Sabi, so, tagayubi ka ha? Opo. Anong batch mo? The interrogation. Ta -ta 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 -ta. Anong student number mo? 7102145. Ah, pag UP ka, alam mo dapat ang number mo. Importante yun, ano? So, talaga ha? Oo nga, ano? ito nga yung number mo. Sabi niya, ano yung dala mo? Sini po? Patungkol kay Kristo? Talaga ha? Palabas mo? Opportunity. Sabi ko, ang galing mo, Lord. Dinitain mo ako para magkaroon ng opportunity makapanood dito ng Jesus Field. Sa, sa Tagalog, sige po, sinet up namin. Nanonood sila. Nung nanonood sila, tatlong reels yun eh. Pwede po bang gawin namin yung programa namin? Yung gagawin nyo, sige. Between reel 1 and reel 2, testimony. Between reel 2 and reel 3, another testimony. Between reel, reel 3 and reel 4, message, ako yun. Pasok ako. Bago po ipalabas yung pinakahuling reel, nakita po natin dito sa pinakahuling reel, nakabayubay sa krus ang Panginoong Jesus. Alam niyo po ba kung bakit? Banat na ako, nag-preach na ako. At wala pong ganyan, walang ganun. Ha? Hapon yan. Kasi sigurong ilan sa kanila, first time makakita ng sini. And there it was, you know, after the, the last reel, and I prayed, I, I made a prayer, and I heard people pray with me in that room, and then the, and then finally, finally the mayor gave me my ID and says, okay, alam ko naniniwala ka na, and he smiled. And you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> and he said, you know what? So many UPians have come here. And they say they're going to talk about God, but they didn't talk about God. They brought in communism. They brought in Marxism. So when I saw your idea, I thought you were one of them. Oh, ganun ho ba? Ano ba nangyari sa kanila? Eh, lumutang sa ilog. Hmm, sabi ko, marunong naman ako mag-swimming. No? No? So we showed that film. Sabi ko, late na ho kami, lalabas ho kami sa mga bayan para mag-distribute. Huwag, no, huwag ka na mag-distribute niyan. Sabi niya, pinasabi ko na sa lahat. Pumunta sa plaza ngayong gabi. And we showed one of the largest film exposure that I've ever seen. The whole town, about 20,000 of them, came, bubong, babaw na mga bus, jeep, and the screen, imbis na sa wall namin nilagay, dinobol namin, back to back. And the children were in front, and you know what? At before, between real three and real four, I had to stand now in that crowd. Opportunity. You see, your opposition is waiting for you to turn into opportunity. How are you going to do it? Be ready to speak. The believer is to be ready to defend and speak up for the faith from Scripture. So let me just develop this because Stephen from Scriptures meticulously record, recounted Israel's history from Abraham to Solomon, verse 1 to 50. Hindi ko na basahin. Assignment nyo yan. He was simply telling Jewish leaders, you know who you are. Abraham, da, 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 up to Solomon. And he reminded them of what they missed, which is the Holy Spirit. Stephen boldly rebuked the spiritual leaders for their hard-heartedness and addressed them truthfully and what? Unashamedly. Are you ready to speak for Jesus? Like he did here. I'm going to skip this. Are you ready to be scripturally prepared and emboldened to attest and advance the kingdom, or speak. Amen? We are ready, we ought to be ready to, and in first word, not end? Serve. We ought to be ready to, but in this chapter, is the ultimate. Be ready to, when they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, they gnashed at him with their teeth, but he, being full of the Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God and said, Look, 
I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. And they cried with a loud voice, stopped their ears and ran at him with one accord. And when they cast him out of the city and stoned him, and the witnesses laid down their clothes at the feet of a young man named, sino po yan? Paul. So, Stephen was going to be martyred here, but Saul will himself be martyred. Of course, he became Paul, the apostle. Siya po ang unang nagpapapatay sa mga Kristiyano. And they stoned Stephen, and as he was calling on God and saying, Lord, Jesus received my spirit, then he knelt down and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not charge them with this sin. Wow. Look at the spirit of Christ in him, like Jesus would have said on the cross, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. And when he said this, he fell asleep. He died. Beloved, are we ready to sacrifice? Some of us may be called to sacrifice. All of us are called to, be, to sacrifice, really. All of us are called to sacrifice. The lessons here, when the challenge is extreme, the ultimate may be called for. Now, what is the ultimate for you? I do not know. But the ultimate may be, if you are going to serve me, if you're going to speak for me, if you really love me, then you ought to be willing to give like I gave my all and my only through Jesus Christ will you give your all and only to me. And some of you have on your plate your job. Some of you have your ambition. Some of you have your monies. Some of you have your plans. Some of you have on your table something that is so dear and expensive and, and cost will cost you a lot, a lot. And some of you, I hope not, but some of you may be called to give up your very own life. Like Stephen. And the ultimate may be called for by for you. But let me tell you, the higher the collateral exchange, the bigger the impact for the kingdom. I challenge you, CCBCers, we are not cut out to give small and meaningless in this church. We are training you to give all. For the Lord, the believer is not always called for, to die, but to offer the supreme. And whatever you have on your hand, give it to Him at its best. And that sacrifice may mean saying no to that promotion. That sacrifice may mean postponing that wedding. Uy, ouch. That sacrifice may mean Something that really hurts. Such a sacrificial act may bring about a breakthrough in the advance of the kingdom. Let me tell you this, beloved. Because of Stephen, the church did not remain one in Jerusalem. Because of Stephen, Christianity spread. And we will study that next week in chapter 8 onwards. It took the life of a martyr to begin the spread of Christianity from Jerusalem into Judea and Samaria to the remotest part of the earth. Be ready to sacrifice. And this, I would say, let's read this together. Go. Selflessly, available, committed, relentless, and immovable. Ganun ka dapat? To face infliction for Christ's enterprise. In other words, sacrifice. Acts 6 and 7, a beautiful ending of the first part of the book of Acts. And I'm glad we're moving into the next part when the church will experience the spread of the gospel to the rest of the world. As every believer is called to be ready for three actions in the kingdom participation, we ought to be ready for these three. Anong una? Be ready to serve. Be ready to speak. Be ready to. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen.